This here is an abandoned checkout. This is an email that is sent after somebody abandons their checkout. And this has got to be one of the most important emails that you can have for your e-commerce store. And today, we are going to be going from A to Z, talking about design, how to set it up, the full strategy, and some of the best practices I have learned from personally managing over $10 million in revenue in the last 10 months from email marketing alone. So if you enjoy this type of content, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button and stick around until the end. You aren't going to want to miss this one. Okay, so number one, we are going to be talking about design consistency. Now, this is something that I feel like is important to cover because I've seen some pretty ugly emails in my day. Now, here are a few things that you're going to want to make sure you have before you start making your emails. Number one, please have a nice logo. This is a logo that I pulled up from Canva. I just made something real quick. Let me go and show you guys. Bam. Hugs and Kisses is going to be the name of the store that we are building out. Uh, and then this is the color palette that I have pulled up here. Uh, this is just something that I pulled from colorschemes.com, I believe. I just did a quick Google search, found something that I liked, and used a color palette. You're going to want to have consistent colors all the way throughout. And from that, we will then go through and build out an email template. So let's go ahead and hop into Clavio. What you're going to do is you're going to click on email templates on the left-hand side here, and then click create template from the right-hand section. Now, for this, I just like to go through and choose one of these basic templates that are already here. Now, there's just a few blocks that we're going to be editing to make sure that this is all good to go. Boom. So there we go. There is the logo. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop out some of this dead space. Clavio does have a in-house editor, which makes it really nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply on that. Now, for the block styles, we're going to want to make sure that we use not only our color scheme, but then also the fonts that we prefer for our store. So the way that you're going to do that is you're going to press where it says block styles. Now, if you have a specific font that is already going to be in here, you could go ahead and select from that. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and upload the colors for this. I'm going to go ahead and use this nice teal color. Now with this, I'm going to be getting rid of any of the blocks I don't really want to keep, which is going to be really anything besides the header, the navigation bar right up top, all of the text, and then a button and a footer. Besides that, we don't really need any additional things. Now with this button, I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments here real quick, which is just going to be a quick color change right here. Now once this is done, you're going to want to save each of these blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and click on each one of these, hit this little star, and here I'm just going to do logo. Now we have all of our blocks completely saved. I'm going to go ahead and press save and return to templates. Now, once that is all saved, you're going to go to Clavio's flow library and select the abandoned cart reminder, just the standard version right over here. We're going to select that. And then we're going to go ahead and press create flow. Now, once this is open, you're going to go ahead and add an additional filter to this. We're going to go ahead and press and, and then we're going to say somebody has not been in this flow in the last seven days. This is just going to make sure that we aren't having any sort of overlap. We're not spamming people and that all of our flows are going to be nice and segmented out. Now, as we can see here, this email is a little ugly right now. So the way that we're going to fix that is we're going to grab this little saved block right up here and we are going to drag that in. And the very first one that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do logo and hit insert block. Now we're going to do footer number two. And you can see why we do this is just because it really makes it so much easier to just build emails really quickly. Now with a little bit of editing magic, I went ahead and made a quick photo for this email. Now there's a few things that I want you to pay attention to. Uh, first off, you can see that this is not sized appropriately. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is center this up, number one, that kind of just moves it over a little bit. Number two, I'd always recommend checking this fill image area. Now we can see that it doesn't quite feel, uh, fill the sides right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on block styles and we're just gonna get rid of this padding on the left and the right. Now that's just gonna make it so that now it's fully uh, the same exact size. Now, one of the big things that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this styles button and change the background here from this light gray to a white. It's just gonna make it kind of blend in a little bit better. Now, one of the things that uh, we're gonna have is going to be this dynamic product section. Now, this is why the abandoned checkout is so powerful because it's going to go through and actually show the same exact product that the customer had in their uh, cart whenever they were checking out. So that's gonna automatically load in. And now here, we're gonna go through and basically just remind them. So we're just gonna say, don't forget about uh, these. Now here's a little hack for you guys. We can make it so that this image actually pushes them back to their product rather than it going directly back to our store. The way that you are going to do that is you're going to click on the product right here 
and that is going to pull up this section. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on rows, dynamic, column, and then image, and that's gonna grab us this little uh, link right here. It's this weird little code. Now we could drop in this same exact link on the image, and that'll make it so that now the image is going to link directly back to the product that is automatically loaded in. Now this is gonna be the very basic structure of email number one. Logo, collection, image, headline, product, and then a brief little description about what it is, and then a footer. Very, very basic. Now with this first email, I would test anywhere from 10 minutes to 60 minutes. Four minutes to me is a little bit too long of a duration, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually move this to 10 minutes. Now this is very, very aggressive, right? So if you're wanting to be less aggressive, you can move it close to an hour, maybe even two hours, but I'd recommend sending it sooner rather than later. Remember, this is just a reminder, it's not a discount at this point. Now here, for the second email, we're gonna actually make this four to six hours later. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this to four hours, and then this one is going to be offering a small discount. And I'm gonna go ahead and rip through the rest of this email flow and then show you guys what it looks like once it's done. Now this is going to be the exact structure that you should implement on your store if you're trying to have a high converting abandoned checkout series. Number one, we are going to have a 10 minute delay and then send a reminder. Then we're going to wait four hours and give them a small discount, right? So this might be 10%, 5%. Then 20 hours later, we're going to send a big discount. Now if you look at this, we have four hour wait and then a 20 hour wait. So we are sending it at the same time of day, the following day for this next email. This is going to be a big discount and a 24 hour urgency. So this is basically maybe scaling it from 5% to 15% and letting them know that this discount is only going to be available for 24 hours left. Now, following that, we're going to wait 22 hours and then send them one last email that is going to be the same big discount that we sent them above here, but letting them know that that discount expires in only two hours. This is a strategy that we have tested across a ton of stores and has been our bread and butter as far as the overall structure of how you should be creating this abandoned checkout series. Now, there are a few little things that I want to make sure we touch on because these are the best practices that you need to make sure you implement for these emails. The very first best practice that I would recommend having on this abandoned checkout is turning off smart sending. Essentially, what smart sending does is it makes it so that you don't have any overlap on any emails that are being sent to the customer. Now, the reason that I would recommend turning this off is because for the abandoned checkout, this is about as high of a high intent audience that you will have, meaning that the email is very customized. It's going to be sending them the exact product that they were looking at, and you have the highest chances of converting somebody. If there was any email that you wanted to hit their inbox, it would be this one. Now, the way you're going to turn that off is going to be clicking on the email and making sure that smart sending is off. On other sequences, you can have this on, but on this one, I would definitely recommend having it off. Number two, the strategy that we are using here is called a discount ladder. I'm not going to give any margin away on this first email, but we are going to start at a small discount and make that discount incrementally bigger. We're, we're looking to sweeten the deal and make it incrementally better until they can't help but make the purchase. Best practice number three is split testing subject lines. One of the most high leverage split tests that you can run is testing different subject lines and testing things like um, using emojis versus not, using scarcity inside of the subject line or just telling them that it's a reminder. All of these little tweaks inside of the subject line is going to yield some of the biggest differences in results for this flow. Now, the way that you're going to set up a split test, let's say that we are trying to split test this first email here uh, with this subject line. The way that we would do that is we would grab this conditional split and drop it in right over here. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna clone this one email and we're gonna drag it on over here. Now, whenever you're running a split test, you only want to test one variable. It's really like being a scientist. If you test five, six different variables at once, it's gonna be very confusing to know what is actually making the difference. Now, if you test one thing, like just the subject line here, we will be able to know whether or not that subject line was the thing that was driving the results. So here, all we're going to do is we're gonna change the subject line. Let's just say, uh, get it while it's hot, right? 
and then maybe we'll add in an emoji or something. Now, all we're going to do is we're gonna grab this little tab and loop it back in. So that's gonna make it so that we have two different paths. This first path is on the left here. This second path is on the right. Now, we aren't done. What we're going to do is we're gonna set up this conditional split to be a random sample of 50% of people. Now, that's basically just saying that 50% of people are going to go down the yes path and 50% of people are going to go down the no path. Now, the reason we reconnect it is because we want email number two, three to still send out to our audience. And that's how we're going to do that. And number four of the best practices is to add on flow additions. A flow addition is essentially extending this email sequence to make it a little bit longer as long as your results are there. Now, what I would be looking at is going to be a 1% place order rate on this very last email. Now, the way that you're going to see that is by clicking this show analytics button in the top right here and then scrolling down and you'll be able to see whether or not that placed order rate is over 1%. Now, if that is the case, what you're going to do is add on one more email at the very end of the sequence to try to really squeeze out any additional revenue that you possibly can. And that is step-by-step -step how you can create a high converting abandoned checkout for your e-commerce store. If you have any additional questions, need some help with setting things like this up for your brand, go ahead and book a call with me down below. Uh, we'll go on and talk a little bit further. And yes, it will be me. We'll take a look at your email and talk about how you could improve it. That's going to be it for this video guys i hope you did enjoy it smash the thumbs up button hit that red subscribe button to join the freaking family and that is it for this one i will see you guys on the next video peace